Hello, I'm discussing the KPA 1500, 1500 watt solid state amplifier. The KPA 1500 is a self contained 1500 watt amplifier system operating on all modes from 160 through 6 meters. It is rated for full power even with full carrier modes for at least 5 minutes continuously. The internal tuner easily matches most antennas and remembers previous settings for instant recall. Full QSK is implemented with silent pin diodes. It is small, lightweight, and easily carried, and works with all standard transceivers. The KPA 1500 runs quietly, with its cooling fan off until heat sink temperature rise requires it. Many protective circuits and a reinforced frame make it rugged electrically and physically. The KPA 1500 is designed for remote operation with both serial and Ethernet control capability. The KPA 1500 internal automatic antenna tuner matches antennas presenting a 3 to 1 SWR to your amplifier. It features an integrated two position automatic antenna switch. The tuner memorizes previous successful tune settings, storing them by antenna port and frequency. A unique Elecraft development allows seamless use of an external antenna switch with the ATU. The tuner is usable with your barefoot transceiver as well, simply by placing the PA in standby. The KPA 1500 won't break your back from excessive weight. The RF deck, containing the power amplifier and automatic antenna tuner, is only 22 pounds. The power supply is only 10 pounds. Both have handles so they may easily be carried around, whether just into your shack or onto a small boat landing on the shore of a rare DXCC island country. All important operating parameters are metered and displayed on the front panel, so you need not carry external watt meters, for example. Lights on the power supply clearly show when AC power is available, and if the main supply is in or out of regulation, at a glance from a distance. The KPA 1500 firmware is undergoing active development with improved performance and new features added. The amplifier is great now and it will be even better later and you will benefit from that process. No need to worry about missing out on new functionality. Download the latest firmware and you will instantly add it to your own KPA 1500. The KPA 1500 handles full carrier key down times exceeding 5 minutes at a time. This includes FT8 with no time limit. Operators stepping up from barefoot transceivers are often astonished at the difference the extra 12 dB makes in their communications effectiveness. Tired of lousy propagation during this extended solar minimum? A full legal limit amplifier will provide a welcome boost. The KPA 1500 tuner employs an efficient L network for impedance matching. This network is auto-reversing depending upon whether you are matching above 50 ohms or below 50 ohms. The tuner automatically relay bypasses itself when it is active, but the selected antenna does not require it. The front panel indicates this happy state by lighting both the ATU in and ATU bypass LEDs. The L network components are top quality. The capacitors are premium RF current rated designs that are supremely rugged and reliable. The two-position automatic antenna switch may be customized via our free KPA 1500 utility program to suit your station. For example, if your station has an external antenna switch for your HF antennas and your 6-meter antenna comes in separately, you could set up your KPA 1500 so that the antenna 1 position connects to the external switch and port 2 is dedicated to 6 meters. Lock out HF from port 2 and 6 meters from port 1 to limit mistakes made during the rush to work a new one. Or you could have multiband antennas on each jack, or anything in between. You may configure optimally for your station. If you allow multiple antenna positions for a given band, the tuner is smart enough to store separate tune solutions for the same frequency segment on each individual antenna port. Each band is broken up into multiple band segments. The tuner stores successful tune solutions by antenna position and band segment. On 80 meters, for instance, your antenna has a very different impedance at 3500 than it does at 3800. 
since the KPA1500 knows your transmit frequency and which antenna port you have selected, it recalls the correct match automatically. For this to work correctly, you must train your tuner by performing an automatic tune in each segment where you operate. Now the tuner is trained, and the next time you return to that frequency or segment, it provides the right match. Elecraft developed a unique feature where the tuner may store multiple tune solutions for the same frequency segment and antenna position. This lets you use your external antenna switch along with the automatic antenna tuner. Here's where that's useful. You have a tri-band Yagi, a multi-band vertical, and a multi-band dipole, all controlled by an external switch. They all cover 20, 15, and 10 meters, but with different load impedances and very different patterns. Let's say you are operating on 14074 MHz. One or more of the antennas require the tuner for full output. You want the ability to use all three, but you don't want to retune each time you switch, nor manually bypass the tuner for only some antennas. The KPA1500 helps you with this. Enable the antenna tuner. Switch to your tribander and perform a tune. Then switch to the vertical and retune. Repeat for the dipole. Now. When you switch antennas, the KPA1500 tries the existing tuner setting. If it presents an acceptable match, the tuner stays where it is. However, if the SWR is higher than a user-definable threshold, the ATU quickly recalls the next solution from memory and retests. If that one isn't low enough, it will try the third. It does this very quickly and without any operator intervention. The memory stack allows up to 31 different settings per band segment giving more than enough flexibility for any practical station. This innovative tuner feature was developed by and is only available from Elecraft. The KPA1500 is rugged. It is fully protected against electrical faults such as high reflected power, input overdrive, and excessive heat sink temperature. It is also physically rugged. Its internally reinforced thick wall aluminum cabinets are designed to be carried around the world. The KPA1500 was designed for remote operation. Its rear panel Ethernet and USB serial port is active while the amplifier is powered down, allowing computer control at a remote site. Additionally, a hardware power control pin allows a digital voltage to turn the amplifier on and off remotely. KPA1500 Remote, our free remote control utility program, is available from the Elecraft website. With it, you may monitor and control KPA1500 operation from anywhere in the world. The KPA1500 is designed to work with all modern transceivers, completely hands-free. You don't need to touch anything. With just a keyline cable and your coax, you are on the air in what we call basic mode. This uses an internal frequency counter that monitors your transmit frequency and, when necessary, changes bands in milliseconds. The drawback of basic mode is its requirement for a burst of RF for the counter to recognize a band change. This causes a slight delay on the beginning of your first transmission after a band change. While this is transparent for many operators, it is completely eliminated by implementing Enhanced Mode. Enhanced Mode is enabled by adding a data cable between your transceiver and the KPA1500. With it, as soon as your radio QSYs, the amplifier follows, without waiting for any RF. The KPA1500 accepts several types of frequency data from the various transceivers. For Elecraft rigs, the single wire AUX bus is used. Four wire binary coded decimal band data is accepted from Yesu radios. ICOMs output a varying DC voltage that command band changes to the amplifier, or may use CIV serial data. Flex and Kenwood transceivers control the KPA1500 via serial data. With enhanced mode and the Elecraft K3 or K4, the amplifier sings and dances. The K3-K4 recognizes that the amplifier is in operate mode and automatically reduces drive power to the proper level. Switching the amplifier to standby signals the K3-K4 to return to full output. Band changes from the transceiver are immediately registered by the amplifier. The band buttons on the KPA1500 control the K3-K4 as well so you may change bands with the push of a button on the amplifier. Enhanced mode is enabled by adding an aux cable between the K3 or K4 and the KPA1500. Enhanced mode cables for many other transceivers are available from Elecraft, including Flex, Icom, Kenwood, and Yesu products. Or you may build your own.
Now let's watch the KPA 1500 in operation. First, we see basic mode operation with the K3, then enhanced mode with the K4, then operation with Flex, Kenwood, ICOM, and Yesu transceivers is demonstrated. Finally, some tricks and little-known techniques will be discussed. Amplifier is on 40. The K3 is on 10. Seventeen. Now let's go to six meters. I have it locked out on this K3. Here we are on six. The amplifier will change antennas as well. K4. K3, K3S, Serial, ICOM, BCD, and then back to K4. As soon as we change bands on the K3, the amplifier follows. And we transmit, it's completely ready to go. band buttons command the radio in the reverse direction. It also switches antennas for me because I have my 6 meter antenna on the antenna 2 port. We transmit and we're ready to go immediately. With the K3 or the K4 set to power set by band, and we go to a band where you have a power limitation. For example, for me, I'm only permitted 200 watts on 30 meters. The K3 automatically QRPs down to proper drive power for about 200 watts of output. Go into standby mode. And the K3 is signaled to go back to its full power table. We go into operate mode. Transmit, we're putting out about 4 watts, and we're getting 200 out. Go into standby mode, and we go back to full power on the K3. As we change bands on the new K4, the amplifier follows and confirms the frequency to a kilohertz resolution. For serial radios, two other parameters need to be set. The communications rate for old Kenwoods must be at 4800. For newer radios that don't have that restriction, we recommend you set it at 38.4. And the next parameter is polling. Polling must be turned on if you're not using a logging computer. Follows the transceiver frequency, it will show precise frequency. To the kilohertz.
and as we change frequencies the amplifier follows and is immediately ready to go. Since most of us use an external antenna switch, I think you'll find this feature very convenient. Having more than one antenna for a band improves our capabilities by letting us rotate directions instantly by using the switch. Ideally, the antennas would present identical 50 ohm matches to your amplifier, but that generally is not the case. Different antennas usually have different impedances, especially at the band edges, and if one has moderately high SWR, we have a problem. Changing directions now requires switching in an antenna tuner or changing the match on a tuner already in line. This defeats the instant direction switching capability. Normal ATUs actually make the problem worse. Let's say these two antennas both present a 2 to 1 SWR. One may be 25 ohms, the other 100 ohms. The opposite side of the Smith chart. Tuner settings matching one will transform the other in the wrong direction. The problem gets more difficult with additional antennas and worse SWRs. The simple solution is to bypass the tuner and reduce transmit power until the worst case reflected power declines into the acceptable range for your amplifier. Here at K6XX I have fixed position antennas pointing in six different directions. They are accessed through antenna relays which let me rotate virtually in a fraction of a second. They are different designs at different heights above ground. Aging and storm damage also has changed their characteristics over the years. While that can be fixed, repairs won't happen right now while I'm on the air. With the multi-match implemented into the KPA 1500, the internal tuner figures out what antenna you've chosen and changes the match automatically. As antennas are switched, the tuner monitors SWR and selects different solutions when the SWR is too high. A quick note about my antenna switch. This switch is basically a, a great circle map with me right in the center. This is north and south, so Europe, North America, South America, South Pacific, the Far East, and north for my rotatable antennas. Up at 21400, the antennas aren't so great. With the tuner bypassed, North America is 1.1 to 1. That's pretty good. South America is not very good, 2 to 1. The South Pacific antenna is 1.4 to 1. East Asia, Japan is 2 to 1. The rotatable antenna is 1.2 to 1. The big problem is the, the European Yagi is uh, 3.5 to 1. Really terrible. So we're working somebody in the United States and everything's fine. The antenna's flat. But then we get called by a European. So we switch to the European antenna. And that's a three and a half to one SWR antenna. But the tuner detects the problem and corrects for it. Right after that we get called by a JA. Well, we're switching from a three and a half to one SWR to a two one SWR. Again, the tuner jumps in and solves the problem. After that, a PY in Brazil gives us a call. And we're able to work them immediately. The menu setting that gets us into this magic is ATU High SWR Retune, and it must be turned on. It defaults to off. Power efficiency versus power output. A lot of you think that you're doing the amplifier a favor when you crank down your output power. As it turns out, the efficiency is pretty miserable at low drive powers. As we crank up the power, not only does the power go up, but the efficiency goes up as well. And the amplifier tends to make its best efficiency at its full rated output power. The message here is that you dissipate about the same amount of power in the heatsink whether you're running very low power or full rated. So from a cost of electricity versus RF output perspective, you get your best bang for the buck at full output power. I hope you found this description useful. If you have any questions, tune into our live stream or contact Elecraft at www.elecraft.com or email us at support at or via telephone 831 
763-4211.